This is the first of three presentations called Life in Earth to reflect what's going on under our feet. The first looks at how soils work, all the characters involved. The second examines where these soils evolved from, covering a period of 100 million years in 10 minutes. And finally, the, we look at the future of soils in determining the sustainability of this planet. We start by explaining the broad functions of soil to bring it to life. And these little characters are going to help me. Let's kick on. Um, there's three main functions of soils, and I think this one most people know about, where bits of plants are broken down. And the posh term is called bioturbation, because it's the biology turning the stuff over and over. And I think most people will know that worms are, are the big movers of, of soil and they sort of just take lumps of soil in and push it back out the other end, during which time uh, the plant debris gets covered in mucus, which then makes that very attractive for other creatures to come along and nibble. And in particular, it's these little creatures here called oribatid mites, which are the main um, creatures that do that. Uh, and we hear a lot about microbes and uh, breaking down debris, well, those, a lot of those microbes live in these creatures. So the creatures eat the stuff. Uh, the digestive system, just like ours, has lots of bacteria in and poos it out the other end. And so it breaks down the heavy duty plant materials of lignin and chitin into much uh, smaller compounds, mainly called humates, but also sugars. So those creatures poo out the remains and those remains uh, enable other the plants that other creatures to feed on. So most of us probably know that process, but that is not even half the story of soils, because the other main function is they're there to grow so uh, grow plants. Vascular plants they're the ones that use water to as part. So they have a str this strong lignin structure that enables water to be transported around the plant from the roots up through the stem into the leaves. And that is the crucial uh, uh, development of plants many, many years ago. And in order to extend that capacity for pulling water in, fungi grow on the roots, extending that, uh, their, these the uh, reach of the roots uh, so that much more water can be absorbed and in exchange those fungi uh, use the energy coming down the plants from the leaves as photo from photosynthesis. So uh, the energy, all the energy in the soil is really coming down the plants from the photosynthesis in as sugars into the root system. But the other, the, the, the crucial part of that, which usually gets ignored, is these little creatures here, these smintherids, that's a particular sort of springtail. And there's billions of these around, and they keep the roots clean, they, they slough off any dead bits, and they eat the fungus, the dead fungus as well. They also manage to eat a lot of bacteria. They, they love the smell of bacteria and eat bacteria. So this, the springtails you can consider as the, both the birds and the bees of the soil. They're the bees because while they're feeding on the roots, they're accidentally passing on the fungal spores to other roots. So they're distributing them. And similarly, when they eat the bacteria, they poo out the spores of the bacteria. So they're distributing them, just like birds do when they're eating fruit and just like bees do when they're pollinating plants. So, uh, so those are the two big functions. The third big function, and these roughly take the same amount of met metabolic uh, energy, is they build aggregates, or properly called PEDs. And the whole science of uh, soils is called pedology. But uh, increasingly we're calling them springs, and it, you'll see why in a moment. The roots, those roots, as they're growing into the soil, produce exudates and there's one particular one called glomalin and something like 25 percent of all carbon in the soil is this substance globalin glomalin the uh, and that helps the bits stick together the the bits of clay the bits of humus 
So while the worms, the springtails and mites are doing a lot of chewing and pooing, that poo also helps stick the minerals together. And the, the first mineral to be stuck together is the clay particles. They're the smallest of the lot. So often the clay is just stuck together, the particles are stuck together, and then along come, uh, they're made into bigger clumps when the fungal filaments sort of start wrapping them all up. So they become bigger aggregates. And so they have microaggregates, macroaggregates, and they provide that strength in the soil, but also the resilience. When, when you're running, you notice when you run on concrete, there's no, there's no give at all. Tarmac gives a bit, but when you're running on the country, you can feel it almost bouncing along. And that's these aggregates have the capacity both to protect a really strong structures, but also a resilience to give a spring to the soil as well. And the other great function that these aggregates perform is they have leave pores inside, so they're not solid. And it's, easy, it's inside these pores that these creatures run around, that the water keeps the soil damp, so that it provides a stable environment. And that is the structure, the architecture, which enables life to go on. So just to recap, the plant carbon that comes down, all plant carbon, either ends up back in the air by being metabolized in the soil and excreted through the microbes, or is left in the soil as a stable soil carbon, usually as these springs. So I'm, I'm just going to pause here for a moment just to sort of hope that you can see that the soil isn't a mush of microbes like lots of people tend to think it is but actually I see them as cities in the soil there's this fabulous architecture going on underneath that uh, Gaudi was probably the nearest <laughs> to get to in terms of how uh, natural patterns uh, evolve but also you know are all mixed up uh, irregularly as well so uh, I'd love, but people can't see it. And I'd love that we had some sort of soil scope that we could stick into the soil and see all this going on. Or, you know, some sort of imaging apparatus that could image this going on. And it's almost as if until that happens, we're still gonna see the, the soil as a sort of dead dirt. And it was Da Vinci, was, that da Vinci was a water engineer and it was him 500 years ago said why is it we spend we know more about all those stars billions of miles away but we know virtually nothing about what goes on under our feet and I can't help but think that this is still the same today so the question I just like to throw out if it pause for a moment is how can we get people to see that the world under our feet is a new kingdom to be discovered rather than just a lump of dirt should we just pause there and see if anybody's got any ideas on that? If you want to follow up this talk with some links, there's one on bioturbation, that's the way the soil turns over, and have a look at my own site called soilanimals.com. The next presentation in life in Earth examines how soils came into being. They didn't just arrive like manna from heaven. And this third one looks at the roles of soil in terms of climate change and global warming.